What is going on everybody? Justin Thomas here. Happy Holidays. This will be part one of the Sophie Turner edition. We'll be looking at Sophie's time on Game of Thrones and why I believe she's at a little bit of a disadvantage, not due to her acting chops, which I think are pretty good actually, but because of her story arc issue due to Dan and Dave and whoever else is. The Justin Thomas Show is for real fandom fans only. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not a piece of shit. There are a lot of naysayers about Sophie in her performance on Thrones, and there's a lot of positive too, especially in the Reddit world, which, wow, naysayers in the Reddit world. Never heard of anything like that. Those guys are usually nothing. Nothing but just not petty and insecure or anything, uh, but doing my research, which unfortunately does include a small bit of Reddit to get a to get public opinion, not to get my opinion, um, you will notice a lot of other content creators will actually just get their videos from Reddit, so that's a fun fact. If you have a webcam and you have no creativity yourself or skills, but you like to get excited about stuff, go ahead and just get a microphone um, or a headset or something. Just and then go on Reddit and see what, you know, at least dedicated um, people have said. I'm not going to say everybody's a genius on there. And then and then just re-say it, but, you know, a lot of fanfare behind it. Just, you know, you know, hype, all that type of stuff. Um, but anyways, that's not about this. This is not about that. Um, what I notice is uh, when I went to go get honest opinions, because trust me, you get honest opinions on Reddit nothing like but tearful honest opinions like today i have a sore throat so i'm sure this video will have a whole bunch of fry voice comments and they will go and make lightsabers in their parents basement fuck you so point is i went on there to see what 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 the old redditors were saying and i was I, I, pretty surprised uh, at least in the forum i was in and it was one of the largest ones i if not the largest one about a year old conversation and one thing i'll say about people on reddit is they they tend to at least make sure that everything from their grammar to um the things they're saying whether it's their own thoughts or not are, are usually like 95 to 99 percent correct they love when somebody says something that is incorrect because that just is their sex when I'm looking at Sophie Turner, uh, the question was, why is everybody praise Sophie Turner? I, I don't, I don't think that Sansa is a good character and all this. And, and that, that right away gave me a little bit of a red flag because I'm like, wow, all the complaints in this forum were about her actual story arc, not how she sold it, but like the specifics of it about how she didn't change and she didn't do this and she didn't learn from this and. It's like, well, you know, Sophie Turner, and we're going to talk about this in the full video, is not had an abundance of uh, other acting jobs other than uh, the Game of Thrones, especially when she first uh, began. There is no damn way that she's in the writer's room. Uh, I'll tell you that. And it, it just came down to um, me looking at the 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 big issues that a lot of people at least on reddit had like it, it was like they were just blaming sansa stark you know not sophie turner they weren't taking into consideration how she, how she sold the scenes how how she you know how she developed as an actress you know i mean she did grow up literally in front of most of us so complaints like her performance is coming off a little monotone and flat stuff like that at least that that's uh that actually is relevant to what we're talking about you can't say that uh why would she trust a little finger again she sucks sophie turner sucks because she trusted little finger again I, again she's not in the writer's room maybe she should be because dan and dave as i'm about to get in here should not be one of the things i was looking into like i said was was her performance on thrones now she started when she was i believe 16 and she ended, she will end when she is 21 in this coming year, maybe 22. A bulk of her experience, besides the X-Men franchise, is on this show for sure. And I think she is a good actress, by the way. But looking at what she had to work with, because we talked about this in the Macy Williams. Now, again, I have a huge, I have a lot, I, I have a lot of issues with, um, with Macy's character. Not Macy's acting, but with the way Arya Stark is written, 
within the last two to three seasons. I mean, she's just a fucking maniac. But again, that's not like something for me to to say that is on her. So anyways, I want to look at their development on the show. In looking at Sansa's arc gave me a lot of red flags and it actually brought me back to like the like the basic stuff I learned when I took my first writing class and, and that's just your um your basic and I I had a chalkboard but I'm not going to use that your your basic story arc and we'll use um <clears throat> just the three act it's I'm not going to get into it. We can do another video if you guys want to talk about writing. Cause and effect style of writing. George definitely has the big, um, <clears throat> you know, story points in his head. Like things like, you know, like how Dan and Dave got the job. They, they knew who Jon Snow's mom was. So the, the plot is where they run into issues. And George also does. George, and he drags things out far too long. That's, that's why, I mean, essentially... And it's an argument about, it. oh, is this a three-act style, five-act style? Again, pretty much, I mean, more arguments you want, pretty much the damn same thing, okay? It's just stretched out. George just has a lot of different characters going through these steps. And yes, it's not as straight up, but it's essentially a lot like Harry Potter. And I, I, maybe I'll pull up some graphics and, and show you what those look like. But let, let's just do this really quick and let me explain why I think that Sophie Turner playing Sansa Stark was at a huge disadvantage compared to a lot of her other stars. Arya's character is hard for me to bear recently uh, in the last two seasons. It's really hard for me to bear but I'm like a stickler for stuff like that. She, I, she, I can still see the the huge entertainment value in her character. Sansa has been a mopey, um, you know, she has been just kind of a downer because obviously she's had a horrible time. She doesn't get to, you know, be the, the super assassin or anything like that. And um, that's going to get us to what Dan and Dave, how they really fucked her because this last season was her big chance to finally have her, maybe not final, but at least like a, a, a big payout from one of her conflicts because the, it's not your regular story where you have your one conflict and then you have your resolution. So we, we have many and especially Sansa has many, but the problem with Sansa's character is what I'm going to try to illustrate right here. Now I'm going to try to do this very quickly and just give a broad example of how you make a visual arc for Sophie's storyline. You'll see something in the trend of her actual visual arcs that you won't see in any of the other characters' trends in the show. And simply put, they have portrayed Sansa as a character who doesn't learn or ever come out of a situation on top. And they actually have scenes that show this in the last season especially. But last season, these scenes showing competent Sansa, who was playing Littlefinger the whole time, came off as just the same gullible Sansa up until the final five minutes of the season, when they let us know their master plan, by letting us know through a sloppy information dump by Bran, stripping almost all of the storyline's payoff, as well as showcasing once again Dan and Dave's inability to see any future other than just getting past past the finish line and not worrying about how they get there. This was a scene with the Stark siblings hatching this plan and it was cut for, I don't know, probably implied boat sex or Masande and Grey Worm doing some really awkward and aggressive yoga that yields no results other than mild to severe bruising and being incredibly pent up sexually. Masande, that is. Sorry, Wormsy, don't care but was cut out by the masterminds Dan and Dave. And another, probably actually the worst of Dan and Dave's mishandling of the character Sansa Stark, is the infamous wedding night rape scene. They chose to take a risk on this so they really can make that Ramsay unlikable since he had such a big following amongst the serial killer community. And I would not have had an issue with this if they would have utilized the impact that this would have had on Sansa. But they chose to make it all about Theon, and this is essentially his breaking point. Since you know Ramsay had been pretty fair with him before, so they had to do something like this to make him turn on his master. By the way, I don't think Sansa needed the extra push to hate the monster who was a part of killing almost her entire family. But when Dan and Dave choose to look at the books, they look at all the rape stuff and it's not because they enjoy reading it, it's because they enjoy putting it on TV. But that's my rant on the misuse of Sophie Turner's character and why I see this as a possible issue for her moving forward. When you compare her role with others in this list, it's definitely not an advantage for her. But tomorrow we will be discussing what I believe lays ahead for this lovely young woman. Insane amount of story arcs with no payoff. So let's jump into it. 
So really quick, now I am not an artist whatsoever, but as I said before, this is something I learned when I was first going to school for writing. It's just a very, very simple, I'll draw it up. It starts off, we'll use uh, for a simple show, a three act, uh, we'll use something like a, I'm not very familiar with the show, I've seen it a few times, I, I don't watch very much network TV or really anything that just wraps up in an hour, but Blue Bloods which is a, it's a decent show for, for what it is, definitely. Um, but it's a good example of a show that has an arc like Game of Thrones has multiple times with multiple different characters, but this show just has one of these arcs, a episode. So you'll start off, and I'll, I'll hold this up for you guys, but they are in their comfort zone, so it's at level, and they're cops, so obviously there's going to be a crime. But again, that is what they do, so it is the norm for them. So then you start to go up a little bit, and you do little hedges almost, little hills. This is where you have your conflict growing. The conflict growing, and it will be building up to your climax. So usually this is done with them finding out about the crime and then thinking usually they found somebody that was involved or they weren't and you know a little twist and turn here they get about uh, 30 to 40 minutes to work with so they need to wrap it up fairly quick but still they're not going to catch the criminal right away so you're going to have your conflict moving up this is your first act and moving up to your climax which will happen in your second act now the climax is usually when they are going to think they're solving the crime are something that's going to go off plan so that's where you'll go straight up so again i am not an artist but these are actually simply how these go so you have your beginning right here where everything's normal so in sansa's case this right here would be winterfell and then this right here where you have a conflict which is amassing into your climax this would be the king's road this would be when she gets to King's Landing because she has issues even as soon as she gets on the road with Lady, of course, being killed. The issue with Arya and Joffrey and so on. And then the Cersei stuff at King's Landing. Obviously, she is you find out very quickly that her dream of being a princess is not great. But in a show like I said, like Blue Bloods, I think that's the name of it. You would have your looking for the uh, perk, ended up not being the perk they thought they were. And then you will have your actual conflict, which would usually be your actual climax, which when a show like that would usually be the attempt for the arrest and something goes wrong or, you know, they get the guy, something like that, sometimes in the more simple ones. This, of course, in this would be just in the first season for Sansa would be the death of Ned Stark. So what happens then is you kind of even out a little bit. You kind of plateau it awful. Um, and this is just, and you'll see why this is like this in a minute. Now, usually, like I'm using the three-act show of, I'm using the three-act show of Blue Bloods for this example. So usually this will go fairly quickly back down because it'll de-escalate and everything will seem to be going their way. It'll be a little bit bumpy, but you'll get something that looks like a little bit like that. That's a little bit steep, but it doesn't really matter. This is kind of just for, for, for yourself. But some people actually just make a triangle as well. So they go, and what you usually see, and a lot of people leave this out, but it's something you'll see a lot, especially in a show like Blue Bloods, is when it starts to even out and all that, you will have a little spike in conflict. Right at the end, almost like a little, um, like, curse of tail. And this is an instance in a show or a movie where the twist happens. Um, say they thought they caught all the bad guys, but there's still a guy with a bomb, so they have to go chase him. But they use the intelligence and newfound confidence that they've achieved throughout this story arc to quickly dash this. That's why it will look something like that much less dramatic than this that is your basic story arc you have the establishment of your character in the beginning most likely a place of comfort and then you have the road to the conflict and the road to the climax no matter what that may be and then you have your peaked out climax and then you see the decline the um 
resolution usually and uh, it's very popular like I said to do these like kind of uh, little like quick takes now like I said that Sansa has a story arc visual that if you put all the seasons of her together that would be like unlike any other actual characters on the show is because she continues essentially to have just this over and over again for example Ned dies and then she deals with Joffrey in the next season being very physically abusive to her Cersei being horrible to her just living in hell then she will get that quick little relief right before season four where she thinks she's going to be marrying Loras and marries Tyrion. Of course, she's horrified there. So you, what you'd get is a lot of those seasons wouldn't be as straight. They'd be more kind of like looking like like hedges. But they, it's still a rocky road. Um, the The issue is, the issue is, is that then you have Joffrey's death. So you're going to think that... Sansa is going to come back now a character is going to come back and like I said these tales are usually dashed quickly at the end the resolution um, Even if it sneaks up on them because of the lessons they've learned blah 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 the journey They've taken that made them better now And I understand that George R. R. Martin definitely and I love it doesn't write like everybody else writes and he writes real people and real people Yes, do make mistakes over and over again, but when you are writing fiction, are you writing really anything that you want people to read, you do need to have payouts. Now, Dan and Dave have just royally fucked Sophie Turner with her payouts, because even when they're supposed to be there, they take them away, like I mentioned in the video before, about Theon. He's the one that learns from her rape. It's a just... So, I don't get how, how they continuously make these just these blatant errors that that should be obvious to them it's the reason that people get frustrated with Sansa's character is because they just always give you that little like peak like when we had Darth Sansa you know um over in the veil vale. and then right away then she's it's even worse she's sold to Ramsey and I'm not saying bad stuff doesn't happen to people in in real life all all the time and you know unfortunately they don't get that little the, the nice clean resolution and, and none of our characters will get that but still if you do this for any of the other characters you know like john will have two of these i'll do a video where i actually make these and and do a little bit better with them i'll do the whole grid um brianne has like one jamie has about two of these traditional peaks but then he starts to even out and you start to see a, a change in character you know this is what really draws you to them and it makes you have empathy for them now you feel sad for Sansa but you be also become angry because you feel like she's not learning now this is not helped by the fact that there is actually scenes where that whole B storyline for last season was just fucking thrown away and I don't know, I have to go back and look. I can't even bring myself to do it about and, and try to guess what, and I'm sure I could just look on YouTube right now and find out why they cut the scene where they were explaining their Ocean's Eleven type deal, which I still didn't think was that good, but at least it showed, like, if they would have showed that earlier, that would have been a lot better for, for multiple reasons, not just to stop this flow of, you know, just no payoffs whatsoever, just... Yo, it's getting shitty, it's getting shitty, it's getting shitty, alright, we get a little bit, a little bit better for a minute, okay, we get a little bit of resolution here, and then, oh, go and get married to the people that murdered my family and raped, okay, you know, and it's not funny at all, I'm not trying to make a joke about it, but it's just, it's not enjoyable, you know, it, it's almost like, it's for like a sadist, so, and, and people don't realize it. You don't realize when you watch it, but it's because it's flawed. It's flawed. It's bad writing. They aren't paying off the story arc. I want Sansa to actually do great things in, in this world, this fictional world. I actually, you know, I'm with the GOT Academy guys on the theory of I, I think she should be the one that takes over and, and think that she should kind of do like the Queen Elizabeth type deal the first but I just don't know, man. If they pay it off now that big, it's like they didn't pay off any of the little ones, you know? Like, that's how it goes. That's how this works. Uh, I don't know. It's very frustrating to me. And I think that Sophie Turner has a lot of talent. I think she takes a lot of risks. I, I do uh, applaud her for her decision to 
to move um, in on that Dark Phoenix role, you know, because that's one of those things that that's a do or die. She's either going to come out of that looking like she was never even on Thrones and people are going to remember her for doing an awesome job in the X-Men movie, or she's going to cement herself with a lot of other people that did not ever outgrow their first big success. Now, a success like Thrones on your resume is nothing to spit at, but, it, you know, these actors are young. These, they're younger than me. I mean, they're like 21 years old. They don't want to never reach the even near the heights again, and that could very well happen. So I think that people that have storylines like Sansa, she's not able to to take the 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 smaller parts like Arya is able to, or you know, even some of the other actors because it's like she ha she's always been like the, the second tier on the show she's not even paid as much and she doesn't have she has a huge social following but she doesn't have that same like obsession over her character i mean yes there's so many fans of the show that there's definitely people that are obsessed with sansa i like her a lot too but i'm just saying that she is not you know she almost has to go out there and do something big because she never got a chance to shine on the show and i hope to god they give it to her in the season but we're talking about six episodes you know, when we have all these repeated failures to pay off any type of story arc, when you have no character development, why are you writing the story? Okay? Unless the story is about somebody that is just going to go insane. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Make sure to subscribe. And happy holidays. I recorded this at like three different times, so that might go on a few times. Two, three. Feeling so small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. Justin Thomas here, and if you enjoyed that video, why don't you check out some of the videos right here? Possibly right here, but make sure to subscribe right here, and we'll see you guys soon.